Hi, my name is Anne, and this is uh, my first floss tube video. This is a video about cross stitch and mm, maybe some sewing and other various crafts, but mostly cross stitch. Um, <clears throat> I'm stitching in hand on floss tube because I stitch in hand. And um, for those of you who might not know about cross stitch, um, it just means I don't use a hoop. I don't use any kind of frames. I just have trouble with them. So I own them. I own some frames, which I'd like to sell because I've used them once or twice and they make me crazy. Uh, so I need to find somebody who wants them. Anyway, I, this is my second take on this YouTube video. And actually the first one wasn't too bad, surprisingly. Um, but I decided I'd put a little mascara on and I'd brush my hair a little bit better and it was falling in my face on the last video and it was starting to annoy me. So I figured it would probably annoy anyone who might be watching. So anyway, welcome to my video. Um, I've watched floss tube for a few years. I really enjoy it, uh, especially when I'm stitching. It just feels like I have a girlfriend or whomever, somebody in the room with me and we're, although I'm not chatting, I'm doing most of the listening. Um, it just, it's nice, it's fun to, watch what other people are stitching and or see what other people are stitching and just hear about their lives and I I mean I have plenty of friends but none of them stitch and you know I can only talk about cross stitch so much with them before their eyes glaze over so um I thought today since I've been watching a lot of the year-end videos of what everybody has finished during the year and what they're working on I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to look at what I've been working on what I hope to finish coming up this year. Um, so I pulled out, I have a couple of piles here. Um, here's, I'm gonna show you what I'm working on first. So this is uh, a Plum Street sampler project called Buzz Off. Now, here's where I'm gonna struggle. Um, it was all focusing really good in my last video. Anyhow, okay, you can see it, I think. I haven't gotten very far <clears throat> on this particular project um just the bottom of the bird and his legs what is that a crow yeah i think so um but you get the general idea it's cute it's a cute little project i'm not sure why i put it down but i'm gonna get back to it hopefully soon um the next one is by the blue flower acorns it's called um, this one, I know I stopped stitching it because I made a mistake, which is typically why I stop a project because I make a mistake and then I can't find it and then I get annoyed and then I, bleh, I find something else to work on. So, um, there's a mistake in here somewhere. I don't know where, and you know, nobody else would know where either. So why I worry about it, I don't know, but either I'll find the mistake and keep stitching or maybe I'll ignore it and keep stitching. Probably not. Um, anyway, it's cute. I've got a ways to go yet on that one. Um, most of my projects, I wish I could tell you exactly what fabric it is and what color and you know, what the manufacturer is. Honestly, I don't really keep track, but mostly <clears throat> I stitch on 32 count linen for the most part. I mean, I'll stitch on Ada or, you know, other Lugana and all of that. But for the most part, I stitch on 32 count linen. And, you know, if this, if I keep doing floss tube videos, I'll try to be a little bit more uh, proactive about writing down what I'm stitching on. Sorry, just not good about that. Um, okay, the next one I'm working on is by the blue flower and it's called wildflower and you know it seems to be focusing on my face i don't know maybe it's the mode i have this maybe it's the mode that i'm videotaping in i'm not sure i apologize you know i'm learning so bear with me people anyway this one really love this one um elizabeth ann can stitch i'm pretty sure she was the gal who was stitching this and then enabled me to do the same. Um, you know, I don't have far to go. I'm over halfway done with it. So I, 
I just need to get a move on. Maybe in the spring I'll get this finished. But it's a pretty one. Also stitched. Yeah, this is linen of some kind. I don't know. Okay. The next one that I'm working on is by the Drawn Thread from my heart. I'm nearly finished with it. Why did I put it down? I do not know. Um, hopefully I will. I think I can get this finished by Valentine's Day. There's not a lot more stitching left on here. So that would be a good project for the upcoming months to finish. It's cute. It's just a little tiny thing and I'll probably make a pillow out of it or something. Um, I don't know. You know, why do we why do we put things down? Usually, well, as I said, it's because I have made a mistake and I get frustrated for some reason and or something, you know, bright and shiny catches my eye and I decide, oh, I need to start that one instead. So I'm sure some of you are guilty of the same. This one that um, is also a work in progress is from the Friend Stitch Retreat, the first Friend Stitch Retreat. I didn't do the last one. Um, I believe it was in 2021, I think. I don't remember. The last few years have been kind of crazy, right? I don't know if you noticed, but <laughs> anyway, this was one of the um, things that came in the box when you signed up, some of the supplies. Uh, really cute. I'm very close to finished, to being finished with this one. Don't know why I haven't finished it again. I think all I have left on this is the charms and a good ironing. Um, yeah, I don't know. But this is good. See, this is good. I've opened up my um, all my project bags to see what's in them. Or not all of them, but a good a good portion of them to see what's in them. Because you forget, you know, you set it aside, and at least I do, you set it aside and forget that you were even working on it. And that's like a happy surprise when you find it again. Oh, look at this. I'm 75% done. Why don't I finish it? So that's my plan on those. Hopefully I will get some of those done this year. Um, the last one that I'm going to show you that I'm, well, no, I have two more to show you. But anyway, this one is kind of funny. Uh, this is by Sam Sarah Design Studio, and it's called The More the Merrier. This is a baby sampler for my daughter, who is going to be 19. Yeah, I'm a little late to the game here. Um, she's kind of the reason that I stopped stitching. I'll blame her. Not, no, not entirely. Um, I stitched like crazy for many, many years. I've got downstairs couple of walls full of samplers that I've made and other various projects. Um, but then when I hit my 40s, my eyes just started to go and I had a really hard time seeing um, the stitch. I mean, it was getting frustrating, so it wasn't fun anymore. Uh, then I got pregnant and had a little girl and um, certainly got distracted by her, uh, happily distracted. So I just set aside all my stitching. And this, well, the saddest part is that during that time, I thought, well, I'll never be able to stitch again because I can't see. So I had stacks and stacks of cross-stitch magazines, like For the Love of Cross-Stitch. And I can't even remember the names of them, but I had a lot of them because this is when I was, you know, I didn't have any kits and I could afford to spend money the way I wanted to. Um... So I had a lot of magazine subscriptions. It's also when there were a lot of, mag, you know, cross-stitch magazines available. Not so many anymore. Anyhow, I just had my husband throw them all out. Like, just get rid of them. I, I can't use them anymore. So I threw them away. That is one of my one serious regret. I've given away a lot of things over my lifetime. And I think that's the only thing I regret. And especially, I didn't even give them away. I just threw them away. Ugh. So anyway, it's probably for the best that I don't have all those cross-stitch magazines lying around the house, but anyhow. But after my daughter was born and, you know, flash, 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 fast forward, maybe 15 years after her birth, I discovered magnifying glasses. Not the ones you put on your face, but um, 
a magnifying glass with a light. I have it next to, I have one on my, um, the table next to where I stitch and I just put my cross stitch underneath it and it's beautiful. It is a beautiful thing. I have no trouble stitching with it. I mean, I can't stitch anywhere else except underneath that light uh, and glass, but um, it brings all the joy back. And I'm so happy that, I mean, what took me so long to figure that out? It was, it's kind of silly, but um, I will, if I remember, uh, we'll post a link to that magnifying glass because for anybody who's having trouble stitching, I'm telling you, it is a lifesaver. I don't like to have something to wear glasses on top of glass. That, like, that was too hard for me. This, when I'm stitching, I look down through the glass to see what I'm stitching. But if I'm watching TV, I can look up and it's, you know, I have my regular glasses on. So it's no, I don't have to refocus or anything like that. Um, so it's great. I really, really enjoy it. Um, and the last thing that I'm working on, well, that I'll show you today, is a project. Oh, I didn't take this one. Or did I? Oh, no, there it is. Sorry. Um, so about, hmm, I would say a year or two ago, the my local needle workshop called Welcome Stitchery up in Crystal Lake, Illinois, uh, closed. The owner retired and she sold the store to a woman or a couple of women, I'm not sure, but they're in Minnesota. So all the store inventory um, went to Minnesota, sadly. Lucky for those who live in Minnesota. Um, anyway, so that was my go-to store and there are a couple of others, you know, within an hour drive of my house, but that one was fairly convenient for me and I used to go on kind of a regular basis. So I was really sad to see that go. I do shop online, but, but it's, you know, it's not the same. I mean, if you know exactly what you want, shopping online is great. But if you just want to go and browse, shopping online leaves, you know, a little to be desired. But anyhow, um, one of the Facebook groups that I'm a part of, um, a cross-stitching group, I, I forget which one, but um, a lady posted the other day that she has a needlework, a needlepoint store up in um, Libertyville, not too far from where I live, and she's selling cross stitch supplies. And I was like, "Wait, what? You sell cross stitch supplies? Where are you?" You know. And so I got chatting with her, and I went last Friday with my daughter. We ran up there real quick to, you know, check the place out, and I learned quite a bit about needlepoint. I didn't know. I'm not a needlepointer, and I can't afford to become one because boy those things are expensive anyhow um it was great she has you know not a huge uh assortment of um charts but she has enough to that I managed to buy three so and I could have bought more but I stopped myself at three and she had some designs that I hadn't seen before and designers I hadn't heard of so that was cool it was uh, I enjoyed it um so the one that I bought that I'm working on right now is by Ink Circles. And, I don't know. Let me take it out of the package here. And it's called Reflections of Ireland. And I'm stitching it Oops, on a Belfast linen. Now that one I remember, Belfast linen. See, it's not going to focus because I think it's the way... Oh, I don't know. Did it? I think it has to do with the mode that I'm filming in, which I think is cinematic mode. Maybe I need to change that. Anyway, that is Reflections of Ireland by Ink Spots, or Ink Spots, <laughs> Ink Circles. And this is what I have done. Not too much. I figured it's roughly about a 16th of the whole project. Um, and I'm using the floss that I'm using. Oh, shoot, no. It's a Gloriana floss, and it's in uh, the color is Forest, I believe. Um, and what I really like about, well, it's a silk floss, so I treated myself because I thought, yeah, I'll be stitching with this floss for quite a while on this project. And I love stitching with silk. It's just, it's a treat. Um, what's great about this floss, what I really like about this floss is that the variegation is pretty, I don't know how to describe it. It, it comes in short bursts. So you don't have to stitch like 12 inches of, a piece of floss before the color changes. And sometimes that does happen. Um, so this, 
It's a very subtle variegation and it changes rather frequently. So I like that and I've been enjoying stitching it. Okay, so that is ink circles. Now, uh, I have a couple of things that I've finished in the last, I don't know, the last, the last little while, we'll say. Grab one. This one is from Cross Stitcher Magazine. I'm not showing any charts on there, right? No. Um, it's cute the way they have it finished. It's in a little, um, it's focusing on my face. I see that. Put in a little, like, yeah, whatever. Okay, here's the flower pot. And there's a cinnamon stick for a trunk. And there's little bells on the bottom of the tree. And there's a little, see, there's a little straight stitching right up there. Or a little line of stitching. I eliminated that on mine because I thought I might have trouble finding a star. So I just stitched mine. You know, I just used this as my star. I think that's fine. I think that looks like a star. It's cute. I love the colors. It's cheery. It took me longer than I thought it would because I just kept goofing up these bells. I, I stitched those bells like four times. I don't know why. But anyway, I have to finish it along with many other things I have to finish. Oh, here comes my dog, Bella. She's wondering who I'm talking to. Hi, Bella. Go lay down. Go on. This little project I just finished last week. This is Heart and Hand, and it's the Smallest Things Sampler. This I stitched for my newest nephew. It was actually my great nephew. He is number 40, I think. I might have to count again. Um, I have a large family, so there's a lot of nieces and nephews. Um, so we're welcoming, welcoming Milo to the family and I'm trying to decide how to finish this if I'll frame it I probably will frame it but I need to find a square frame but it turned out real cute um, another thing I finished recently that I really like is by hands-on design it's called present blessings and I made it just the way you see it there I made it into a pillow this is my fabric on the back. Um, and I stuffed it with, um, what are those little pellets? Those like plastic, plasticky beads. I don't know what they're called. I've got them over here. Um, but it gives it a lot of weight. Anyway, I just have it sitting on the table next to where I stitch. So when I'm stitching with my magnifying glass, I can see my little pillow. And I do reflect upon my present blessings. I a lot of them so I'm so anyway when I went to that that needlepoint store which I think is called oh man my brain is bad let's see if she has it stamped on here nope um a little stitch a stitch shop a little stitch shop maybe you know what I'll get the correct name for you and let you know uh I'll put it in the notes I guess of the of this video anyway so these are a couple things I bought I haven't started stitching them but this one is from hands-on design called stitch some happy I think it's cute it's just fun and this other one is from threadwork primitives it's called Quaker block print oh I just noticed down here the original designs was by Nan Lewis okay I didn't I'm not sure if Nan Lewis is, I recognize that name. Anyway, okay. Anyway, I think this is a very cool pattern. I like, uh, I like the architecture. I like the graphicalness of it. It's not probably a word, but um, I don't know. It caught my eye and I like it. And my husband will say, why do we need something else that says A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Why? Why do we? I don't know. <laughs> we just do. Uh, this is another one I found downstairs. This I didn't buy this over the weekend, but Home of a Needleworker um, by Little Thread. No, Little House Needleworks. That's another one I want to get to one of these days. Um, this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. I have a lot of um, 
I have a lot of patterns I haven't stitched. I have a lot, I have a few, I have other things that I've abandoned, really abandoned. Um, one I just came across when I was downstairs looking through my stuff. Um, was one of those angels by, what was her name? Oh, I can't make it. Marilyn Bloom, I believe was her name. And I, I have one. Uh, I, it's like a Christmas angel. It's very pretty. It's like three quarters of the way done. And I thought, oh yeah, I'll pick that up. I'll start working on it. And I did one day and I quickly put it down. Like it was, I don't know what it is. There was too much what I consider confetti stitching. I'm not a, it's not a, um, you know, what do you call it when it's all, when the whole thing is stitched. The word escapes me. It's not that, but there's a lot of dense stitching, obviously, because it's this little angel with this beautiful flowy um, blue dress. Um, but I just found it frustrating. I mean, I, I mean, it seems so wasteful to just not go back to it and finish it. But like when I get annoyed when I'm stitching it, it seems, well, no, this is not why I cross stitch. I don't cross stitch so that I can get annoyed because there's plenty of things in my life that annoy me. Um, cross stitch should not be one of them because it's my hobby and you know, you know, so it's like, for me, it's kind of like, I love to read and I read a lot. Um, and if I start reading a book and I never used to be this way, but now I am, if I read a book and I just cannot get into it in the first, I don't know, I'll give it maybe 50 pages, say, I just put it down and there are way, there are so many more good books out there that if this one doesn't excite me or interest me, I'm not going to waste my time. And not that it's a waste of time for anyone else to read it, just not for me. So, um, so that's sort of how I feel about that angel. All right, something's beeping at me and I'm going to ignore it because the last time it was beeping, it really wasn't important. Um, so anyway, I, yes, I have plenty of other things that I have that are in progress and oh I have a whole drawer full of things that are done but just I didn't I haven't framed them or made them into pillows the thing is I have a lot of uh, of cross stitch that I have framed and I have you know a big sampler wall downstairs that I'll show you at some point um so and, and it's not that I don't have empty wall space I do but framing is expensive you know it really gets pricey and I don't know I just I, I need to come up with some new ways to finish things and I wa I do watch videos and people you know they finish things so cleverly and then they put a magnet on the back or something and I've done a few of those and I'm not super happy with the way I, they've turned out but that's me that's on me that's not on anybody else um so I have a ways to go there I'll figure it out um, so I guess, I guess we'll end that, end this now. Uh, if anybody does watch it, I, great. I hope you enjoy it and I hope I'll see you again soon. Okay. Thanks. Bye.